There's a lot of retouching mistakes I see beginners make, but one of the most common ones I see, other than cranking the clarity slider, has to be retouching eyes. A lot of beginners will overdo retouching their subject's eyes and make them look like they're glowing. They just really push that dodge and burn tool to their limits and add too much contrast and brightness to someone's eyes. Now I have a feeling that most photographers and retouchers have done this at some point in their career. I know that I have. But in this video, I wanted to show you the proper way to retouch someone's eyes in Affinity Photo. So to start out, I've just imported this photo here, and the only things I've changed is that I've adjusted the white balance. Other than that, this is just a photo straight out of my camera. So the first step in this process is we're going to remove pretty much any blemishes or veins that we see in the whites of the eye. To do this, we're going to use the healing brush tool. So to use this, the first thing I'm going to do is press Ctrl or Command J on my background layer to just to create a duplicate. And I'm just going to zoom in here onto my eye. Now to use this tool, all you have to do is hold down Alt or Option and select a clean part of the eye. So for example, like right here, and then we can use that part to paint over the parts that we don't want of the eye, like these veins here. So we can just start kind of painting over these with that part that we have selected there. And Affinity Photo is going to do its best to kind of blend the two together and make everything look good. When you're doing this, you want to make sure you're selecting something pretty close to the thing that you're trying to get rid of and something of similar color. Because if we were to like select something like the iris here and start painting over, you can see it's going to look pretty weird. So just make sure you're selecting something pretty close to it so that we can paint over something of similar colors and values. So I'm just going to go through and finish this and I will be right back. So I think this is actually a pretty good starting point for what we're going to move on to next. Now you don't have to worry about fixing like the overall color over here because you can see we have the white part over here and then it kind of shifts into like a yellow and reddish hue. You don't have to worry about that because we're going to fix all of that in a later step. Now that we've done that, the next step is to do dodging and burning the correct way. Dodging and burning is kind of like adding or removing contrast to certain areas by either painting shadows or highlights. So if you've done dodging and burning before, you might be ready to just go grab the dodging and burning tool, create a 50% gray layer, and get to work. But there is a much better and non-destructive way of dodging and burning your photos. So the way I recommend you do this is to add a curves adjustment layer on top of everything. Then what we're going to start out with is just burning. So what we're going to do is drag down the middle part here just a little bit. We don't need too much. And then with that layer selected, we're just going to hit Control or Command I, and that's going to invert our mask on that layer. And now we can just grab a brush, our brush tool by hitting B or coming over and selecting this. So now with that brush selected, we're going to make sure we have a hardness of zero so that we have a very soft brush. And we're going to bring our flow down to something really small, just so that we can paint over certain areas that we want our effect to be a little bit stronger on. Because if we have a flow of 100, the effect's just going to be 100 straight away. But if we have a lower flow, something like around 10%, it's going to be a lot more subtle. And if we want to, we can paint over a certain area to make it a lot darker. Make sure with this, you're painting on with a white color onto that mask layer. So now what we're going to do with this, I'm just going to reduce my brush size a little bit using the bracket keys. So now with this, what we're going to do is paint over the parts of the iris that are dark. Not the entire thing, but just the dark parts here. So we can start painting over these areas. I'm going to reduce my brush size even a little bit more. And you just want to kind of go through and paint over some of these dark areas. And you can go through a couple times to get your desired effect. And we're just going to continue kind of going through this, painting in these darker areas. When you're doing this, you kind of want to make sure you're following like the grain of the eye, I guess. So as it's kind of like coming out here, make sure you're painting along that sort of like axis just to make sure everything you're doing is going to look natural because if you, you know put a line like this through it might look a little bit weird so i'm just going to continue going through this now with this it really doesn't look like we've done that much but if you turn off and on the layer you can see just how much we've actually done and it actually is going to make a pretty nice effect but with this i think this is a pretty good effect that we have so far you can see the before and the after of what we've done here basically we've just darkened parts of the eye that are meant to be dark anyway and if you want to you can always come back into your curves adjustment and adjust how strong you want this effect to be so i'm just going to adjust it roughly pretty much where we had it i think look pretty fine 
Now that we've done the iris, something else you can do in your photo is you can actually darken the pupil if you want. My catch light is right in the middle of my pupil, so I'm not going to actually do that. One other thing I do like doing in my photos, though, is I will add a slight burn around the edge of the iris just to add some contrast there between the white parts of the eye and the iris just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. It's very subtle, but it helps kind of bring the attention to the eye just a little bit more. So now you can see the before and after of that. So now that we've done that, we're basically going to do everything the same way, but now this time with dodging, which basically just means we're going to lighten parts of the eye that we want to lighten and add some highlights. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment. We're going to bring the middle part up this time just a little bit. Close out of that. We'll hit Control or Command I on that layer. Make sure we have our brush selected with a zero hardness and a low flow. And make sure that our color selected is going to be white. You can always change them just by hitting X on your keyboard if you need to paint over something with black to hide that part of the layer. Use our bracket keys to reduce the size of our brush. And then we're just going to go in here and then paint over the highlighted parts of the eye. So we're just going to kind of continue what we were doing with the burning but this time with dodging. So I'm gonna continue doing that, and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so I'm gonna consider this pretty much done with dodging as well, and I just realized I forgot to name this layer, so I'm gonna name it dodge. A few other things you can do with this as well is you can paint over the catch light in the person's eye. So for example, if you wanted to paint over this, we can lighten that catch light a little bit as well, just to make it stand out a little bit more. And you can also paint over the whites of the eye, but if you're gonna do this, make sure you keep it extremely subtle because otherwise it's very easy to go back into the glowing eye, which you don't want. So if you're going to do that, just make sure you only do like one stroke over the eye. Just to make it stand out a little bit, you do not need to go crazy with it at all. So now with our dodging and burning done, we've taken away all the veins in the eye. We've dodged and burned the iris to make it stand out a little bit more. And you can see the before and the after of everything we've done thus far. Now there's one more step we have to do, and that's just to basically fix the part of the eye that is miscolored. So basically we just want to whiten the eye. So to do this, I'm going to create an HSL adjustment layer on top of everything else. We're just going to bring down the saturation just a little bit, just until we can't really see the yellow or reddish part of the eye and make it look, you know, at least white or gray. We're going to close that out. Then just like our curves adjustment, we're going to hit control or command I to invert the mask. Use our brush tool over here, and we're just going to paint over the part of that eye that was miscolored. I'm going to do it over here as well, because there's a little bit of red over here. Now with that, we're pretty much done retouching that eye. You can kind of see the difference between the eyes here, and it does look a little bit weird because only one eye is done. But now you can see the before and the after of everything we've done there. So as you can see, all the effects we've done here have been pretty subtle. We've basically just gone over the eye and added some contrast to it to make it stand out a little bit more because a person's eye is drawn to contrast. And obviously we want the person looking at the eyes because, you know, eyes are beautiful. So this is just a great way of adding some contrast to the eye while keeping it looking natural. Now something I will say as well, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're doing both eyes at the same time. I just did the one eye to demonstrate how it's going to look as like a before and after. But normally you would do all of these steps to both eyes at the same time. So now just real quick, I'm going to go over and do the other eye and then show you the finished results of that. So now you've successfully and properly retouched someone's eyes while making them look great without making them look unnatural. Not to mention everything we've done is non-destructive. So now we can go back into any of these layers and change whatever we'd like to change and make it exactly how we want it to be. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you guys have any suggestions on a video you'd like me to do, leave it in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.